Uh, John, what do you make of Donald Trump's statements? I imagine at some level they're being met with a bit of confusion in Seoul. Um, they are. Thank you for having me. Um, I think you, you take his comments uh, with a grain of salt uh, in the context that you take his, uh, his position with NATO um, not hand enough. Uh, you take it with, uh, you know, with a grain of salt. Um, unless it's a tangible, um, unless it's something tangible that Trump can put his hands on, um, he tends to treat everything as transactional in foreign policy, especially U.S. foreign policy. So with him undercutting, um, he's essentially undercutting Seoul's security um, at the moment, and as well as Japan's security um, with these tweets. But they are just tweets. A official U.S. policy is still to defend the Korean Peninsula against North Korean aggression. So I think uh, South Korean officials need to parse out his tweets and actually official U.S. policy. Now, but then, but then if, if, if I may, John, for a moment, it's not just tweets, is it? Because uh, Chas pushed for uh, South Korea to pay more for what he has called U.S. protection. In fact, he's asked for the South Koreans to pay twice so far. And apparently he's, uh, he's succeeded both times. Oh, and he, oh, and he has. Uh, and South Korea's agreed to pay, I think, in the area of almost $900 million, which is an 8% increase from the previous year which is substantial considering the size of the South Korean economy. Um, it's not as vast as the U.S. or even China's economy. So it is a, it is a significant amount of money. Um, and the total, cost of, of, uh, the total cost of the U.S. to keep uh, ground forces in Korea is, I think, close to $5 billion. So um, paying, agreeing to pay $900 million is still pretty significant. Mm -hmm. um, but the U.S. is actually pushing for the full amount.